Whether or not you're into Rainbow Six Siege, you still probably know that it's a series that's had a pretty long and extensive history in the industry, with the first Rainbow Six game coming out way back in 1998, and almost yearly installments after that. Rainbow Six Vegas, I think, was a really big turning point for the franchise. I mean, it was the first game in this series to include what we now recognize as more modern gaming mechanics. With things like regenerating health and checkpoints in its attempts to bring the series to the seventh generation of consoles and a new generation of gamers entirely. Compared to the previous entries in the series, which really epitomized challenging, slow-paced tactical shooting, Rainbow Six Vegas was a game you could pick up within minutes and pretty much get the hang of, much to the dismay of many of the series' original fans. Does that make it a bad game? Well, no it doesn't, and I think it still holds up as one of the better tactical shooters ever made and still a pretty damn good shooter in general. Let me explain why. So in Rainbow Six Vegas, your character is a guy named Logan Keller, starting the campaign in Mexico to capture a terrorist leader named Irina Morales. During this prologue, Irina somehow manages to escape and Logan's two teammates are also kidnapped. Talk. Fuck you. You're surrounded. Throw down your weapon. What this prologue really serves to do though is set up the main conflict in Las Vegas where the area suddenly comes under attack, which of course ends up having ties to Irina's terrorist group and it's where Logan is sent next, which is where things really kick off. Now I think a big part of what makes Vegas so much fun to play is that it has a simple but still somewhat complex control scheme. Gone are the days of mapping controls to every single button on the keyboard, now you really only ever have to worry about a few at a time. Aside from the basic movement and shooting controls, which should be second nature anyway. Now the game's called Rainbow Six, but it really should be called Rainbow Three. Yep, I doubt that joke's ever been made. Because Logan is almost always working alongside his other teammates, Walters and Jung. Jung! Sir, we studied the casino's blueprints. The tangles have the entry points covered. So we'll go through the wall. The buggles won't expect that. Giving these guys orders is quick and painless. You press spacebar to send them to an area, usually just to advance them into a room, or you can force them into cover and also get them to stack up on doors, which you can then breach in a bunch of different ways. Pressing G will change the rules of engagement, causing them to attack enemies on sight or wait until they're engaged beforehand. And pressing Alt will cause them to follow you or hold their position. Yeah, it is a lot simplified from the way it used to be in this series, but that's not to say it's dumped down. And unless you utilize these guys properly, you're still gonna have a bad time. On the surface, Rainbow Six Vegas is an FPS, but when you're close to a solid object, you can use it as cover by holding down the right mouse button, and then the camera's gonna switch to a third person perspective to let you see your surroundings better. And you can also peek out and take shots with the directional keys. And even in this position, you can still easily give out orders, all whilst taking bad guys out at the same time. It's a control scheme we've seen dozens of times since, but I think it's one of the first times it's been implemented, and it still works well and gets the job done. Both Walters and Jung are pretty damn good at taking out enemies, more so I think than the player because their reaction time is a lot quicker. And sometimes you're better off sending them out like guinea pigs into areas beforehand to draw the fire of enemies. So you can then flank around and get the kill. That's if these two guys don't kill everyone beforehand. The only time this stops becoming a viable tactic is the last few levels where the enemies are decked out in body armor and use some of the best weapons in the game. And sending these guys out in the open is like sending them to their own death. But seeing these guys burst into a room with a breach charge and take out everyone without breaking a sweat just never really gets old, and it's a testament to how well their AI is coded. Copy. Clear. You rarely have to worry about them, which is really the kind of thing you hope for in a squad-based shooter. Having said that though, this is still a pretty damn challenging game. Even on the default difficulty, you can't really take all that much damage before dying, and if someone opens fire on you at close range, it's pretty much curtains. Sometimes, even though you're attached to cover, you can still take damage, meaning you really got to be aware of your surroundings and consider the angles your enemies are attacking from, and how you might be exposed. It's a long way from a lot of other cover shooters, where once you're in cover, you're pretty much invincible until you pop out to take a shot at someone. There's a checkpoint system instead of quick saves, which I actually don't mind here because the lack of being able to save scum every two seconds I think makes the combat a lot more intense, as you never really know when the game's going to grace you with that next checkpoint. Taking out a bunch of guys repelling from the ceiling in that large opera hall sequence would be a lot less impactful if you were just mashing that F5 button every time you took one of them out. And besides, you really find yourself suffering from cheap kills anyway. 
I mean, there's gonna be a few times when someone spawns behind you or an enemy gets off some kind of bullshit shot. But if you're playing smart and not just running around rooms like an idiot, it can be really challenging and rewarding to clear out a room of terrorists like a cold cut badass. Save for the occasional spot here and there that hasn't been designed all that well. Normally it's some kind of bottleneck like a single staircase or a doorway that you're forced to go through. Most of the level design accommodates multiple approaches so you can tackle each situation however the hell you want. And just like your teammates, the enemies show off some pretty clever AI. They'll pop in and out of cover, even blind firing at times to avoid exposing themselves. And you can hear them shouting during combat, giving each other orders and updates on their situation, which I think makes it feel a lot more genuine. One thing I really loved about Vegas was also the amount of weapons you could play around with. There's a whole bunch of guns from pistols, submachine guns, assault rifles, sniper rifles and shotguns. Aside from that, there's the expected grenades and flashbangs and you can toggle between a thermal and night vision mode if the situation needs it. With both mods distorting the player's field of view at the expense of improving visibility. I think one of the coolest setups is when you take along a desert eagle and a riot shield and you're just this kind of unstoppable juggernaut, gunning down bad guys with his hand cannon whilst barely suffering a scratch. The best weapons though I always found were the assault rifles because they've got good damage, good range and accuracy and can take most enemies down pretty quickly if your aim isn't terrible. Sniper rifles are useful in certain situations, but I never found much use for the shotguns and playing around with the SMGs was just then out of experimentation before I found an assault rifle and just kind of stuck with it. Enemies will usually carry the same guns the players carry too, so in between the outfitting boxes you're coming across it's never hard to swap weapons on a dime if something you're using just isn't working right. Looking at it now, and even really for its time, Rainbow Six Vegas is a bit rough around the edges. It's weird too because the Unreal 3 engine was still pretty new when this first came out, but even then it looked a bit sloppy. I think it probably had something to do with the game being developed for the consoles as well, which was and still is a much larger demographic of gamers. The main areas it gets let down is some of the character models, usually the arms and the faces, and the general texture work is often pretty blurry. Oh god. Now that's not to say it's horrible or anything because they've done the best with what they've had and there are some segments that still look pretty good. What is really cool and I think still holds up is those views you get when flying across the top of the Vegas Strip in a chopper, able to see all the chaos and carnage from high above. Rainbow Six Vegas always just manages to put you into these really cool and cinematic moments during some of the gunfights. Like one of the highlights has to be when you first arrive in Vegas and fight your way into a nearby casino as you take out enemies on the street. Down. Whenever you're in gunfights inside casinos, it's common to see nearby slot machines explode in a shower of sparks at pocket change, as gunfire just rips everything to pieces. There's a really neat section later in the game where you're in this dark, smoky stairwell moving down floor by floor, waiting for terrorists to pop out and take a shot at you, and it's just nail-bitingly tense. At one point, you'll even work your way down the iconic Fremont Street, engaging in combat with terrorists from all angles as nearby civilians run and duck for cover. To say it's awesome is a little bit of an understatement, and there's always the right amount of things for you to shoot apart, whether it be something as simple as a window to make every gunfight feel memorable and engaging. Tango, neutralized. Tango, neutralized. Animations across the board are also pretty damn good. The way that enemies will repel through nearby skylights or windows when they're attacking you the way your other teammates breach into rooms and the kind of seamless controls when you're popping in and out of cover. I think the ragdoll physics look pretty good too because it feels planted in the real world as opposed to similar games with physics engines where the bodies would often comedically fly around at times. Overall, it definitely shows its age visually but the gameplay is so good that it doesn't mean two shits. Outside the campaign itself, Vegas had a really active and enjoyable multiplayer community but sadly that's all but dead now. Along with that, you've also got the Terrorist Hunt mode, a mode that's still in the series' most current iteration with Rainbow Six Siege. Terrorist Hunt is pretty much as it sounds. It's a lot of environments from the campaign just lazily thrown together, with a bunch of terrorists placed throughout each area waiting in corners to kill you. If you're playing it for the first time now in 2018, it's just a bit of an exercise in patience and trial and error with no real payoff. I mean, it's fun in co-op at the very least, but that's about it. Rainbow Six Vegas I still think is a really good game and a lot of fun to play. It can be as challenging as you want it to be, has lots of customization with the weapon loadout and tells a surprisingly good story. In 2008 a sequel was released, expectedly titled Rainbow Six Vegas 2, which improves a few mechanics whilst also weakening a few others. 
And in the next video, Sunny Jim will rappel out of a chopper and see how it all stacks up.